Very good morning. Um, my name is Danny Blom. I'm a captain of uh, TNT Airways Flight 051 from Liège to Dubai today on this uh, 10th of March. We are here uh, together with my first officer, Michael van der Bos. Um, we're preparing the flight at the moment in the TNT crew room and we'd like to welcome you to our flight. All right, now we're in the aircraft, uh, the uh, Tango Sierra Charlie as we call it, Boeing 777 freighter. Um, preparing our flight, we're fully busy. Uh, we just uh, spoke to our loadmaster. He gave us uh, the uh, load sheet and uh, the note talk. Load sheet, of course, important to tell us, uh, of course, our uh, max takeoff weight uh, for one. And it gives us our uh, index, which we use uh, for the trim comparison with the FMC. He also gave us uh, the special load notification to captain called the no talk. It shows us if there's any uh, particular uh, cargo on board which we uh, have to take special care for. For instance, today we have uh, quite a, a number of fresh vegetables which are going to Dubai and uh, some medicine and they need special temperature requirements. So we've just set our uh, temperature, which you can see on here on the uh, temperature page. The temperature in the main deck, we set it to seven degrees, which is the, uh, the pink number here. And uh, the forward lower cargo area is also to seven degrees because that also contains some medicine. As you can see here, we have the main deck, the lower forward and the aft. This here is the cockpit and this is the passenger supernumerary area. Michael has been checking if all the systems are uh, in the right setting for uh, this stage of our flight. Basically, there's four panels here and Michael will look from uh, top left going down to the second row, third row and fourth row to see if everything is in the correct order. Myself, I've done uh, the basic setup of the uh, FMC and uh, we've been requesting the route which uh, Michael will uh, finish off for me as we will go outside to check the uh, exterior uh, of the aircraft to see if that's uh, acceptable for me to uh, accept the flight. So we can put down our signature on uh, the tech lock uh, that we accept this flight and uh, start it. It's now 40 minutes before the estimated time of departure so it will give us plenty of time uh, to have a good look around. We're going to start our pre-flight uh, inspection, the walk around. Of course it starts in the cockpit, um, which uh, we've just done. And then this is the passenger area. As you can see, we have some passengers as well today, um, which just happened. We have some pilots uh, from the 74. We're going to uh, meet their aircraft in Dubai, uh, getting ready for a flight. It's called positioning when uh, they're not actively flying, but uh, flying along uh, as a passenger. And um, this is the area which they can uh, sit in. Some nice business class seats, and uh, it's a good area to take a nice rest. Of course, we have to take the, uh, check the uh, safety items uh, there as well, and we have to brief the passengers uh, so that they're fully aware. As, of course, we don't have a stewardess to take care of them. They have to be uh, self-sufficient should something happen. Okay, we're going to go downstairs now and have a look around the aircraft. Let's take our fantastic flashlight as it's still uh, very dark. We're going to start here on the left-hand side. What is important is uh, that we check the general uh, condition of the aircraft, the surface, uh, to check that everything is unobstructed, not damaged, uh, especially around the uh, area with the pitot tubes and the uh, static uh, ports. Important to check because nowadays we fly RVSM, which means reduced vertical separation, uh, which actually means that uh, at higher levels, the distance between the aircraft uh, is uh, less than it used to be. It's a thousand uh, feet as at lower levels, which needs uh, a higher accuracy of all the equipment. The condition of the skin can uh, worsen uh, the reading of the altimeters. If there is some damage on the skin or wrinkles close to the areas of the pit or, st or static ports, uh, it can affect that. So it's something we also uh, need to check. First of all, here we look at the uh, crew oxygen discharge. This is uh, the oxygen bottle for uh, the crew in the cockpit. If uh, the green indicator is gone, it means that there was an overpressure on the bottle and that uh, the oxygen is actually escaped. Of course, inside we already checked that the pressure was good, but uh, it's also uh, good to check this uh, indicator. There'll be another one on the back side of the aircraft for the passengers. Let me go and check the uh, nose wheel. Of course, we check the condition of the wheel. Maintenance will have done the same uh, recently and uh, as I saw in the tech log, 
they've already signed their release. So now basically I'm just checking a little bit of what they've done before. So look at the general condition. For instance, the strut here, this area here shows me there's uh, enough space on the strut. It's not fully compressed. If it's fully compressed, it means uh, there's not enough uh, uh, gas in the cylinder and uh, it will affect the aircraft, so then Mazers would have to take some action. Of course, this is looking great. The tires are fine, a little bit worn here and there, but uh, still in good shape. We look at the inside of the nose gear bay. We check also here the strut. We check that there are no gear pins in there. Sometimes when they tow the aircraft, there will be gear pins uh, stuck inside, so the gear does not collapse. Uh, when somebody's in the cockpit riding along, maybe uh, pulling a, a gear handle, for instance. But uh, when we need to fly, uh, these pairs, gear pins need to be removed because otherwise the gear won't come up and uh, that wouldn't be very nice. Okay, we check the lenses of uh, the, the taxi lights. They look fine. You have to be careful here because it's very slippery. Okay, here are the uh, pitot tubes which I discussed. Okay, we check the skin area, as I uh, said before, clear of any wrinkles. We have uh, an ice detector here and a temperature probe and an angle of attack vane. Of course it should all be there. Any hatches, there's quite a few hatches for electronic bays, have to be closed. We check the condition of the ray dome. Um, static wicks here, those uh, metal uh, bars, they have to be on. There's no damage. Windscreen wipers are still there. And of course on the other side of the aircraft, also again the instruments, pitot tubes. There's two here, one for the alternate system, one for the first officer system. Ice detector also and the angle of attack vane. Here you see the GPUs, we have two GPUs always. Giving us backup power should one of them fail. Emergency exit, used for uh, emergency escape in case of uh, problems, especially uh, rejected takeoff for instance. Check that all the hatches are closed, this is the uh, forward cargo. Uh, lower cargo area looks good you see here the uh, pressure relief valve is still open this will close when the aircraft will become pressurized here you see a uh, static port of course again you see this area here marked by uh, the square it should be free of any damage no wrinkles on the skin to make sure that uh, the indications at higher levels of the altimeter will be very accurate. Here again there's the static port for uh, the right and the left system and here the center system. So again three separate systems. Here you see press negative pressure relief vents also like on the main cargo door it will uh, relieve the uh, aircraft of negative pressure. We also have some positive pressure relief uh, valves later on. We check here the uh, air intake, we check the uh, landing lights here on the wing and then we go uh, to our engine. Basically again no damage, check that this temperature sensor is working, it's uh, still there, there's no damage on, uh, on the fan blades and the general condition as well. Of course in winter conditions, it's right now the end of the winter, uh, we would have to check here inside if there's some icing and otherwise we'd have to clean the uh, engine intake. One of the biggest engines around, the General Electric uh, 90. This one is uh, rated 110,000 pounds thrust. So uh, quite a lot of power, which will uh, put this beast into the air. Okay, we of course check the cowling of the engine, check that everything is there that should be there. Below the cowling, we check if there is any uh, liquid spillage, of course oil for instance, um, which might indicate a problem. We also check that the reverses are nicely closed. If they won't be stowed, of course, uh, we would have to revert to maintenance to uh, do something about it. Check the underneath of the wing. To see again if there's any damage or not. And here, the underside of the fuselage. This is about the area where the air conditioning uh, units uh, will be placed. And these are the exhaust ports for the air conditioning unit. We walk to the other side of the engine. As we do that, we'll look at the uh, rear of the engine. 
We inspect the, uh, the bypass. You see there's a very large bypass on this engine, which is part of the reason that it gives us so much power on, uh, on takeoff. The more cold air you can pass outside of the engine as opposed to warm air inside of the engine, the more thrust it will give us and the quieter the engine will be. So the higher the bypass, actually the more power. But of course there is a limit, which is basically the space you have underneath the wing to mount the engine on and the space you have below the engine pod between the, the ground surface and the engine itself. Of course, as you can imagine on landing, if the wings will droop due to a cross window for uh, any reason like that, there's of course a limit by possibly hitting an engine. On the 777, it's not so much of an issue. 7.4 with four engines, engines further on the, uh, on the wing, uh, it is uh, uh, more limiting. Okay, uh, this is the uh, actual exhaust. You see uh, the turbine section rotating there in the wind. And we just check uh, general condition here. Then we continue along the wind, the wing. Of course, we check the uh, leading edge uh, flaps that they're uh, st nicely stowed. Over the uh, engine, we have a Kruger flap, which is a slightly different leading edge flap. Very important for uh, lift on takeoff and landing at slow air speeds. The leading edge uh, is uh, a big part of this uh, lift increasing game. At the end of the wing, we check, of course, the navigation uh, lights which are uh, dual here. A lot of the systems are uh, redundant, either dual or triple redundant, which makes this aircraft uh, very efficient and uh, capable in case of problems, it can still continue. Here you see the wing, it's a nice raked wing, this uh, form, which negates the need for a, a winglet and still gives us uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot better fuel flow because it reduces uh, the wingtip vortexes. Here we have the ailerons with some static uh, discharges on it. In case of lightning strikes, it will uh, dissipate the uh, lightning electricity. Here we have uh, an exhaust for uh, fuel. Should we have to dump fuel, it will come out of here. These are of course uh, fairings uh, to connect the flaps. This is the outboard flap here. This is the inboard flap. And this is an aileron. This aileron is very special as it's also used as a flap. It has a dual uh, use. Okay, then we go to the, uh, the right and main gear. As you see, uh, six large wheels. The back side of the main gear has a, a steerable axle which will help us uh, steer around the, the, the corners on the ground below certain airspeeds and it will make uh, steering much easier. What we check here also is the status of the brakes. We put on the, the parking brake so it's actually pressurized right now and uh, here you see an indicator which uh, shows us the wear of the, uh, the brakes. Should the indicator be flush with this metal part? then uh, it's time for them to be replaced. As you see here, this one is uh, very close to being replaced. There's still a few millimeters on it, so it's still fine for now, but it's uh, something that will be up for maintenance in uh, the next month, I suppose. Of course, uh, we check that the hydraulic lines are properly secured. And we do the same with the other wheels. Again, here we check for uh, brake wear, general uh, tire wear. Well, so far everything's looking fine, as expected. Here you see the wheel chocks, which will need to be uh, taken away before the flight. And of course, again, struts. And here is where um, the gear pins will uh, be placed for towing an aircraft. Of course, again, we check that they're not there. And actually on the main gear, there's two positions for that, also here. We check the general condition. Here you see the main strut. Also there, there's some space, which is good. And then we check inside underneath. 
We check that all the gear doors are attached. If one of them is not attached, it might make a big difference for uh, the weight, the payload we can take. And then we would have to ch check the uh, configuration deviation list to see what effect it will have on the performance of the aircraft. Again here, those gear doors need to be in place. Then we move to the back. Over here, where you see the warning light, we have the ram air turbine. Shoot, and the probability is very low. All the electricity of the aircraft uh, stopped because of dual engine flame out, for instance, and um, battery power gone. There's a ram air turbine which we can either uh, uh, deploy manually or it will come automatically in certain conditions and it will generate electricity and hydraulics just through a, a propeller which will rotate in the wind. Over here is what I spoke about before, this is the uh, oxygen discharge indicator for the supernumerary area and it's uh, as expected green. This is the rear cargo uh, door for uh, the bulk cargo which is uh, here in the back and some rear cargo which will be placed here. This is actually the bulk cargo access door. Okay, then we we'll go on to the rear of the aircraft. We will look at the uh, stabilizer here with the elevator attached. Looks in a good condition as far as I can see, of course. We can't check the upper side of uh, the wings or uh, the stabilizer. We'll have to uh, believe that there's no damage there as uh, better monitored by maintenance themselves. We check the uh, condition of the rudder. Of course, also on these uh, areas, important areas of the aircraft, there are some static wicks to dissipate any electricity, should there be uh, lightning strikes. Then we come around the aircraft, of course, uh, the rear navigation light should be uh, on and working, as it is. And we check also the rudder with the, the trim tab below at the bottom. It's looking good. Coming over to the left side of the aircraft. What you see here on the tail is the exhaust of the APU. Of course, it uh, should be unobstructed as it is. And then on the left side of the aircraft, it basically uh, it's a duplicate of what we've uh, just checked on the other side. Over here on the stabilizer there's something different. There's a little camera which will actually show us uh, in the uh, supernumerary area um, a picture of uh, the outside which only on the ground though to check that actually the cargo door is closed from the inside. Of course the registration part of Europe, Belgian airline, part of uh, a global company, TNT, and with the registration of the air aircraft. Oscar Oscar is of course for Belgium. We check the exhaust ports. Here you find some antennas. And over here is the main cargo door for the main deck. Of course it's uh, fully loaded already, so the aircraft is uh, basically ready to go. Okay, on this side of course you see uh, the red beacon on the side, which will show in the aircraft when we're in flight. Um, our relative position to them, our relative movement. Red on the left, green on the right, white on the back. And it will give them an idea of uh, in which direction we are moving. Very important that they're working, of course again, Dual lighting should one fail, the system is still working. Just imagine the size of the intake of, the, of this engine, this General Electric 90. It could probably fit me about almost twice, that's how high it is. Negative pressure relief valves, also on this side static ports. And here's another one for cabin pressure. Positive relief uh, valves. And that completes our uh, pre-flight inspection of the aircraft. It's looking perfect for flight. The sun is uh, slowly starting to rise. We have uh, another 20 minutes approximately before we will uh, depart.
So we're going to go back inside and uh, complete our pre-flight preparation. So okay, we start with the pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist, oxygen. Tested 100%. Tested 100. Flight instruments. Heading uh, 136. Here, there, there. And almost on the compass, which is a little bit affected by the metal from the buildings in front. Okay, that's fine. Altimeter is uh, set to QNH 0026, and it's indicating 610 feet left, right. Yep, checked 136 twice, uh, 10266. Uh, pre flight check is complete. Checked. Okay. Now, here's the performance that Michael has prepared for us a little bit earlier while we were doing the walk arounds. Weather conditions have been checked, and we have information Lima. Michael's just uh, brought it for forward onto the lower screen there. Um, it's from uh, 15 minutes ago, which will uh, be fine for this departure. Visibility will be deteriorating uh, with this uh, drizzle that started just now. Okay, uh, information is in, runway wet. The wind has uh, been entered here, temperature 8 degrees, QNH 1026, and a takeoff weight of 271 tons. Center of gravity from the load sheet has been filled in as well. And uh, we're presuming that uh, wing and uh, anti ice, uh, engine anti ice will be selected on for departure. It gives us a uh, performance with uh, a flap 5 departure, flap 5 takeoff. Yep. Engines reduced to uh, takeoff 2 setting and uh, reduced even more with uh, uh, an assumed temperature of 41 degrees. Goes into too much detail to go into that right now. Um, Ground global cargo 3940 uh, request taxi. Given here, and our speeds will be 51 for a V1, our decision speed, rotated 162, and V2 164. Checked. All this will give us a uh, stop marching on the runway 426 meters, should we need to make or eject a takeoff. The ref speed is uh, 154 for landing. Which means uh, our cleanup speed should be 80 knots higher. It's the 234 yep. for uh, flaps up. Setting for the engine 87.29 and one for departure. Here is our, our um, engine failure procedure. We have an acceleration altitude of 1700. That equals a height of 1100 above the ground. And this is a, uh, a safe procedure to fly in case of an engine failure, which will keep us away from any obstacles. Which basically uh, means we uh, take off from runway 23 and proceed 20 miles straight ahead to position intersection Rudix and then enter a hold over there whilst talking to A to C. And we do that at a safe altitude above MSA. So, do you agree with uh, that sure. on uh, your laptop? Yeah, perfect. So checked. Allez, grand, uh, bonjour, quality 051, uh, requesting uh, departure clearance to Dubai, please. Quality 051, yes, grand, bonjour, information Lima, clear to Dubai via the old no 5 Sierra departure, climbing flat level 50, Contact him. Contact Dubai, all of five zero level five zero. Quality is all five one. Once uh, the aircraft is uh, clearance of any equipment and safe to start the engines, the mechanical uh, let us know. Mike has already uh, selected uh, the secondary engine page here on the lower ICAS screen, so we can monitor the full start of uh, the engine. Can you clear to start? As yeah. you clear to start engines, starting two, then one. Two and done one. Okay, uh, in the cockpit we uh, call two and one uh, right and left, which is a slight difference. So we're going to start with the right and engine. Please start the right engine on auto start. Air is being used to uh, start rotating the N2 compressor here. And then I select the fuel control switch to on. The auto start function has been selected, so it's fully automated. Controlled by uh, the onboard system. As you see here, the N1 is now starting to rotate slowly. We have oil pressure, which is important. And the N2 is uh, increased to 32%, which means now the fuel is coming in. And now you see the EGT rising, which is showing us that uh, the flame is lighted and the aircraft is, uh, or the uh, engine is accelerating. And one is now past 10 percent, and it will be fully re started when it's around 20 percent. 
All indications are normal values, so it doesn't indicate any problems. Now it's uh, started and it's stabilizing, and we're going to start the left hand engine. Start left engine. And set parking brakes. Left fuel control switches to run. And the mechanic has asked me to set the parking brakes so they can uh, take the tow truck away from the aircraft. Okay, again on engine one and two is uh, rotating, oil pressure is coming in. And at around 27%, anyone here should start to rise. A little bit later today. There we go. And two is starting to slow down. And now you see fuel is introduced. And then it should light up within uh, two seconds, which is doing nicely. Again on the the left engine, the values to me are showing normal values, so I'm not expecting any strange situations to happen. If there are any like uh, overheat or uh, hung starts, the auto start system will uh, take care of them. Now the engine is uh, stabilized. Please disconnect the APU. And electrical power is uh, based on the engine IDT generators. Okay, engine anti ice has been selected on by Michael, which we can see here on the screen. And we can tell uh, the ground to uh, disconnect. Cock with the ground, we have two good starts, you may disconnect when you're ready. Okay, that's a good point, then signals on the right. Thank you for your help, signals on the right. right. As we wait for him to disconnect, and uh, before we see him visually on the right hand side, we're going to check the uh, working of the uh, elevators and spoilers, as you can see here on the flight control page. You can see the spoilers coming up and the elevators okay. going up on the left. I see the bypass pin. Right. Thumbs up. Okay, thumbs are up, which means we can uh, select flaps 5, as calculated by performance. Turning the ailerons to the right, again you see them going up on the right, down on the left, and the spoilers on the right and the wing are used as well. I move the control column forward, and you see the elevators. Indication moving down. I pull back, elevators going up as we should expect it to do. Flaps are going to position 5 when they're green, they should be there. It should be coming now, there you go. And then we check the rudders. Michael, are you ready to yeah, check the rudders? Ahead. Holding the tiller wheel, we check the rudders right full, left full freedom of movement. And then it's fully checked, and we could do the before taxi checklist. And yes, I have wing auto engine on uh, recall. It's checked. Flight controls. Checked. Uh, and ground equipment. Left is clear. Uh, right is clear. Before taxi checklist complete. Request taxi. On quality 051, request taxi. Quality 051, taxi link point runway 23 FTR 6, QNH 1026, the scope 7161. Taxi, uh, only point two three left zero six uh, one zero two six cook seven one six one quality zero five one. So the taxi clearance is as uh, yes, ground for Romeo Bravo, Bravo in the six six zero good morning. Yeah. So they can track us. Romeo Bravo, Bravo India six six zero is gone. Uh, could you back in about one minute? Brakes go off and the flight commences. Uh, At this moment we're officially in, in flight even though we're on the ground. And it's mainly important to uh, to realize when the certain situations happen, as from now, we have to regard the aircraft as being in flight. As opposed to when we were still being pushed back, it's uh, still a scene on the ground. Which means that we treat uh, the situation slightly differently, the procedures are slightly different. Of course, on the ground, there's two ways to uh, move the aircraft. When we're going straight like this, we can just uh, use our rudder pedals to keep the aircraft going straight. Or alternatively, we have the tiller wheels on the left and the right. The rudder pedals allow us a freedom of 7 degrees left and right of the nose wheel. And the tiller wheels allow 70 degrees left and right. Of course, uh, the only way to be able to turn any corners. And uh, as explained before, it will also uh, use the rear axle of the main gear, which is steerable to help us around the corners. As you might have seen, as opposed to the pre-flight uh, walk around, the weather has uh, deteriorated quite a bit, visibility-wise, mainly due to lower clouds, a little bit of fog, 
and uh, rain. But it's still not being regarded as uh, low visibility. And while we're doing this, uh, we're going to be the first at the runway, so we're going to be ready to go in a few minutes. I'm going to select the weather radar on my side. Michael selecting uh, terrain mode on his side. And uh, we can ask for uh, the before takeoff checklist. Quality uh, 051 to monitor tower frequency 118 decimal 125. Uh, you can expect a small delay before departure. We are finishing uh, the low visibility procedure installation. Other than uh, we're monitoring 118125 uh, and ready for departure. Quality uh, 051. For takeoff checklist complete. For takeoff checklist is complete. And as you might have heard just now, uh, they're about to introduce uh, low visibility procedures at the airport. Quality uh, 051 uh, left over radio again. Line up and wait, runway 23 left via CR6. Line up and wait, 23 left via uh, CR6. Quality 051. All right, we've been uh, clear to line up, not for takeoff, but clear to, to line up. And wait on the runway 26 at 06. Uh, your turn to the left is identified 600 feet. Elevation check. And the approach check. Section is to our go ahead. Uh, 23 right uh, vacated via Charlie 4. Request to proceed uh, Charlie 4 to 3 left uh, Sierra 4 to get to Sierra 6. Uh, in section, yeah, plus uh, besoin, j'ai un véhicule qui est maintenant positionné en Sierra 6. Even though we've been cleared by ATC, ah bah okay. uh, Alors, je vais sortir, uh, par le vent brick. Ok, tu me confirmeras quand le brick est bien fermé et que donc on est bien tout uh, dans les conditions. Dans quelques secondes. At our quality of 5-1, the red bar is still on for it. Thanks. Thanks. Now they're off. So with you descending uh, 060. Captain at 3716, uh, Liège Tower, uh, good morning. Project sector is uh, still clear, of course, as far as we can see, but uh, TCAS-wise, we don't see any uh, returns here, except one south of the airfield, which is uh, basically on a circuit. Of course, lining up, um, we try to use as much of the runway as possible. So I won't follow the yellow line completely. And this will show you how large the aircraft is. Okay, 952, turn the left heading 060. Sitting four meters in front of left the heading 060, call 952. Now we wait for the bar for takeoff clearance. Right, 051, report passing 2000 feet, wind 270 degrees, 5 knots, runway 23 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 23 left, call you passing 2000 feet, call it 051. Okay, 952, descend to 3000. Are you ready? Yep. 3000 feet, right, we set our clocks, 952. We'll start our time. And there we go. We add a little bit of thrust, see if it stabilizes, and we connect the auto throttle. Thrust ref, set take of thrust. Then 952, turn left heading 310. Heading 310, call 952. Copy on 3716, descend 4000 feet, QNH 1027. 18 knots. 4107, Ethiopia 3716. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. 3716, turn right, heading 060. 3060, Ethiopia 371. Hold on, check. Trust rev, VNF speed. Quality 
051 passing to Dallas. Great, 051, as if I'm on departure, contact Brussels on 129R decimal 5, 7, 5, bye bye. 129R 5, 7, 5, 40, 0, 5, 1, bye. Okay, 952, left turn, heading 260, clear as approach, runway 2, 3 left. Brussels, uh, good morning, 40, 0, 5, 1, with you, 2.8, climbing 5, 0. Quality 0, 5, 1, Brussels, good morning, radar contact. Quality 0 5 one climb to flight level 230. Climb level 230, quality 0 5 one correct when passing flight level 0 5 zero, turn the right amount to 16. Passing 5 zero, right to 16, quality 0 5 one Bila, turn the right amount to 16. Yep. Turn right, correct, Flora, Bila, I want to Approaching transition, set standard. Standard set, indicating flight level 40 now. Checked. Flaps one. Sexy. And we'll take flaps one for a little while until passing five zero at least. Checked. Okay, approaching five zero. You want to exit? Check speed to the path and succeed and execute. There's the right turn, and we will continue accelerating after the turn. Sure. And then we're leaving the poor weather behind us, climbing above the clouds. And a few hours from now, we'll be enjoying the sunshine again. Perks of a pilot job.